live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE, covering AWS reInvent 2018. Brought to you by Amazon Web Services, Intel, and their ecosystem partners. We are back in Las Vegas here at AWS reInvent, along with Rebecca Knight, I'm John Walls, and I know what you're thinking, email. Oh my God, email, I, the avalanche, the problems that it causes your folks in IT. Well, I tell you what, Chris McFadden is here to solve your problems. VP of Engineering at SparkPost, and Chris, good to see you this afternoon. Thanks for joining us. Good to see you, I'm happy to be on theCUBE. Yeah, great. So, this is my right. third time in, at reInvent, but first time on theCUBE, so happy to be here. Oh, so, so a, a, a CUBE rookie. That's right. We, we, we have a fine <laughs> uh, to, to, to me, leave yes. you with then on the, on the way out. Remind me to get okay. it to you. All right, so tell us about SparkPost first off, about, um, uh, we talked about email, I mean, what your primary focus is, and just the challenges that you're trying to solve for your clients. Sure, yeah, SparkPost is the leading email delivery provider. So our customers send over five trillion emails a year. That's over 37% of the world's commercial email. So that, that's obviously a lot of email. So uh, we're focused on a B2C email. And what that means is that any app who has the need to send, send email, we help with getting that email into, on time into the inbox. That really helps product managers and product teams with ensuring that they can get the right kind of uh, performance the analytics, and also the human services to make sure that they can get customers to adopt their service, you know, grow engagement, and ultimately revenues. I understand you have a new product, SparkPost Signals. Tell our viewers a little bit more. Uh, yeah, so I'm very excited to talk about SparkPost Signals. So, as everybody knows, you know, email is super important to people. Uh, and with email, you know, being such a high uh, ROI for most, customer, for most companies, when you have a dip in email performance, that can really impact a company's uh, revenue as well. So, so I'm excited to talk about SparkPost Signals because what that can really help with is being able to provide some dashboards and tools so that you can have more data-driven, predictive, and actionable uh, insights so that ordinary customers can have that kind of email expertise at their fingertips really to be able to then boost their performance. So I can, I can certainly talk about like some of the particular challenges you know, that this would solve for people. So in particular we have a health score and also uh, spam trap reporting. So for example, what can happen is if you, or maybe somebody in your organization that you don't even know about, they could go out and acquire like an email list, right? More email addresses, the better, right? Sure. Well, next thing you know, you end up landing on spam, tra spam traps you're getting blocked, your email's not going out, so it's better off to get early notice about whether there's some sort of problem, so then you can actually react and correct the problem before it starts impacting your business. So, so is it a, a delivery problem or challenge, or is it a, a firewall challenge or problem? I mean, I mean, kind of, how do you balance that out? Because, uh, I mean, you, it, it seems like it's a little bit of both, actually, or could be a little bit of both. Uh, so, Email is a very much an open network. You know, there's no, no one particular uh, tech company really owns it. So anybody can send any, any email, sure. right? That's why most email that's sent is actually spam. So on the ISP side, these are the inter internet service providers who are like Gmail or Hotmail that are actually receiving the email. They're very protective of their users, right? So what that means is that if, if you buy email addresses or you're sending too much to people, and they say, I don't want this email, then the ISPs can actually say, you know, you're doing this too much, you're being abusive, and we're actually going to start blocking you. So none of your email is actually going to get delivered. So none of your password resets, none of your order confirmations, none of your marketing email. So you have to be very, you have to, be, you have, to have very good email uh, sending practices, otherwise you run into trouble. So for most, for most customers, for most companies we work with, you know, their expertise is, is elsewhere. You know, they're in social media, they're in banking. Marketing, whatever. whatever right, right. Yeah, right, you know, they don't necessarily know all the, all the best ways to be able to manage their email streams. And yet, email is, is mission critical to their businesses. Exactly. This product launches in January, but you've Correct. already been testing the waters a bit with some of your customers. What are you hearing, what are they saying? So, uh, we've, ho we've heard a lot of very good things. Um, the, the usual response from customers is, when can we get it, you know? 
Uh, so, so we're we're frantically working to to roll this out, right? Um, but we've actually, when we were doing the demos with customers, we were actually showing them real data, so that uh, so this wasn't hypothetical. We're, we're actually showing them real data with their own health scores, with their spam trap reports, um, also showing, which is really interesting, their engagement cohorts. Mm -hmm. So what that means is that uh, if customer, I mean, if our companies uh, that work that work with us are not sending to their most engaged users, but are also sending to you know, users that don't actually engage much at all, then that can actually hurt their overall deliverability and engagement. Sure. So when we showed them these uh, cohort reports, showing them that if you, if you actually are sending more to your more engaged users, ultimately your, revenue, your engagement and revenue is going to go up. So we've actually worked, even before Signals was, was a product, we've worked with customers to do this. And we have some very high profile customers who've actually Reduce the volume of email they've sent through us, but their actual engagement has gone through the roof as well as their revenue. And we've also worked with customers, and that's more on the engagement cohort reporting. Uh, on the other side, when it comes to like spam trap uh, reporting, we've had customers who've actually run into problems where they inadvertently started emailing to addresses that are on spam traps. And spam traps, if you don't know, are essentially like bogus email addresses. Sure that are out there like honeypots, and if you email them, then it tells the spam trap owner that you obviously didn't get a real person to subscribe to this or to opt in, so you're obviously following bad practices, and I'll report you to maybe a blacklist, um, which will then prevent all of your email being, being delivered. So we were able to work with that customer to really uh, identify the rate of spam trap hits that they have, and they were able to clean up their own practices based on that, and then get back get back in business and actually have better engagement, uh, you know, for what they're doing. So, I mean, you're here at AWS, so there's a public cloud play here somewhere. Is this a, about a customer migration? Um, are you educating people and bringing them along as well to the public cloud experience? I mean, like, what are you doing here? Right. So, so we we have our we have our cloud service, and that's that's uh, built on AWS. We've been in AWS for for over four years now. And we, you know, we love coming here and learning about a lot of the new technology. We also have you know, a booth here and we're, we're promoting our own service. Um, what, um, what we also have is that we have an on-premise product, Momentum and PowerMTA. And both of those products are heavily used uh, you know, throughout the industry for sending, for sending email. So we have a number of customers who are you know, coming to us and saying, we're looking to move to the cloud, right? So we can either help them move their mail streams to SparkPost, which can be very convenient, mm -hmm. or if they want to continue to, to run their own MTAs and some of their own infrastructure, possibly maybe they're a bank, or maybe they're, maybe they're just not, it's not the right time for them, then we're, then we're able to you know, look at other options, potentially things like hybrid analytics, and that's a way for them to be able to get the additional analytics and things like SparkPost signals, but without actually moving everything. But I, I'm definitely very encouraged uh, uh, yesterday's keynote had Guardian, mm -hmm. and that's quite an ambitious project to be able to move to the cloud. Mm -hmm. So I'm very, uh, I'm very excited. We're also SparkPost is one of the SaaS providers that they chose to use in part of their migration. So rather than continuing to try to run their own infrastructure, they said, "Here's an API. I trust SparkPost. Uh, they've got the right security, the support services, and things like that to be able to get the job done." I'm curious about the, the future and, and sort of will email always be an integral part of doing business for, for companies and sort of what, how SparkPost is thinking about its future business model. Right, so, um, so email's been dead about 20 years. <laughs> Supposedly, that's what they that's keep what saying. They keep right? saying. <laughs> um, however, every year uh, email volumes keep growing. Um, everybody has an email address. It's the, really this the preferred method of communication even among the millennials nowadays. Email is also, again, it's an open platform, so it's not controlled you know, by the big tech companies. And so it's very ubiquitous. It's also a good system of record. And also, you know, there's certain things that don't really make sense to send over push or SMS. So email continues to be a real workhorse for, for companies, uh, both in triggered email as well as marketing email. So we have a number of uh, customers who are in these next generation MarTech uh, vendors who are providing even more, uh, more services, 
uh, they use us as the back end for doing that delivery, but they're seeing even more demand, you know, for again, on the marketing side. And again, there's more and more apps being built. There's more and more um, opportunities there. They all need to send email. And we see, certainly with Sparkbook signals and otherwise, that with the smart use of data, it really becomes an even better opportunity to grow those relationships with your customers. Mm -hmm. right? So rather than just being a transaction, right, that's an opportunity for a relationship building interaction. A value add. Right. Well, five trillion emails, I think half of them, I think I'm sending half of those these days, so maybe you and I ought to talk. <laughs> Thanks for the Get time. Help. It's been yeah, a pleasure welcome. to have you here on theCUBE, and uh, again, we we'll leave you with a parting gift, yes, please, by you. all means. I appreciate it. Chris McFadden joined us here, and we'll be back with more from AWS reInvent. We are live on theCUBE from Las Vegas.